For some reason, our, our engine was eating serpentine belts. So the question, of course, is why is the engine eating serpentine belts? Is it just a couple of bad belts? Was it bad luck? Um, they gave us a couple of other belts that were the wrong size, so that really did not help the situation. It decided to happen offshore in the fog, surrounded by ice. Uh, but luckily there is enough wind that we were able to turn around and sail back into port. It would have been actually much worse if we were just bobbing around out there because we'd still be bobbing around out there. Uh, so we did fortunately had good wind and good wind direction and we sailed all the way back pretty much all the way to the dock. I think the problem is probably jury rigged enough to be solved for now but we will know ultimately uh, in a half hour and then we'll know better in two weeks. <laughs> it actually worked. These are not your puppies, are they? It's mine. Oh, these are your puppies? Yeah. <laughs> small yeah. world. I have small yeah. world. No, oh, <laughs> oh that's one week old. Like two days, yeah? Couple no, days, right? No, my three weeks. Two, two weeks? Two, three weeks. Mm -hmm. my. Oh my god! Hello, baby. Hello. Hi. Little, little polar bear. Hey. It's not too toy. It's not Nine years ago, we were here in Inglefield Fjord, and we were looking at what is driving these glaciers around us to melt. We are looking at the ocean warming that's going on, these currents that are coming in and melting the glaciers from underneath. Is that still happening? Hello and welcome to the end of Inglefield Fjord, roughly 800 miles from the North Pole. This year's primary scientific objective is with NASA's Ocean Melting Greenland Program, or OMG. OMG is a five-year program that is researching the health of the Greenland ice cap and its surrounding fjords. What we are doing is we are helping them locate a warmer, saltier water column that is coming up from the Atlantic and eating Greenland's glaciers from underneath, helping to speed up the rate of the glacier and therefore the melt. It's been nine years since we've been up here in Inglefield Fjord investigating the ocean current and if it's warming glaciers from underneath. Uh, we happen to notice the glacier has retreated by four miles. So we're here investigating and let's take a look at the data. When lowering the CTDs through the water column, we can look at the temperatures at depth. This particular CTD was to 700 meters and it shows that at depth, the temperatures this year at in 2025, I've almost doubled in comparison to 2016, nine years ago. So that's the first thing we're looking at when we're here. And the second thing that we're investigating is how much of a natural carbon sink glacial fjords are for taking up carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and trapping it. And it's great. We spent a couple of years up here, 2015, 2016. And it's been a while since we're back up. It's a special place, and uh, we're really excited to get back up here and collect more data. For the last 24 hours, we've been doing a drift station here in front of these multiple different glaciers, uh, trying to study the carbon that's being uh, extracted from the atmosphere uh, by the fjord. In order to get the gas exchange from the air to the sea, the carbon dioxide, we have to measure carbon dioxide from both the atmosphere, up the mast, and carbon dioxide from the seawater. And we do that by running these hoses both directions. One hose goes up the mast to sample the air, and another hose goes down to the seawater and pumps water up 
into a bucket. Within that bucket, that water is transformed to a gas, and that gas goes to another Lycor gas analyzer. Throughout the expedition, we have been continuously using these gas analyzers. However, we also use a dissolved inorganic carbon analyzer from Lycor, so we can verify the amount of carbon that's in the water. So it uses acid to combine that carbon, that dissolved carbon, in the seawater sample, and then it measures the amount of carbon dioxide. This is partially an approach that we take to verify our results. We are at 7750 North. It's been 10 years since we've been in this fjord and done any research. And turns out it's shallow enough in here that while we're getting our carbon and methane data, we can also do some ADCP transects. This will probably be our last opportunity to do ADCP transects, measuring the velocity of water coming from the glacier for sea level rise. So, you know, we try to get as much research done as humanly possible. It's a lot of work to get up here, and any chance we get to collect some more data, we will. Cute boat. I don't look like it's been in the water for a while, but it's cute. Well, we've made it to Etah. This is our furthest north for this year's expedition. We're at 7818 North and um, just doing a last bit of research, wrapping things up. It's a beautiful place and it's, it's great to be back. We had a lovely time here in Etah. Uh, we had a fire pit. We saw many, many animals, muskox, arctic wolves, and arctic hares. And uh, yeah, we're pretty rested and we're ready to head back south now. So now we just got to go about, what, 4,000 miles south to uh, Annapolis. We made it back to Upernavik, dropped off our two crew who came with us to Northwest Greenland, and now we're ready to sail south and finish our expedition.